we're getting ready to transition and talk about folks who want to retire within five years. And we're going to play a video um, from one of our community members, Renika. Renika, not sure if you're here today, but thank you so much for submitting your video for our Pink Table Talk. So let's go to the video. Hello, my name is Renika Weston. I live in Maryland and I just hit the big 5-0. I actually don't have an age, um, a specific number for retirement, but I do have a financial number and I plan to get there in about four to six years. Um, because retirement for me is not really about age, it's more about a lifestyle. Um, so when I'm asked the question, what do I envision for retirement? For me, I don't really think about retirement as a specific thing or an event. Um, I think about my income for the next 20 or 30 decades. I think about the lifestyle I want to have and what is the number that's going to get me there. Um, and when I'm asked the question, what would I like to do or um, how would I like to spend those days? I really just want to wake up with only the responsibilities and fun that I choose. Um, having more days to relax, spending time with family, vacations, um, and still maintaining the work that I choose. And then when I'm asked the question, what life events or people have impacted my ability to retire, I would say first and foremost, my father. My father always talked to me about savings. He always talked to me about retirement. Um, my partner at my first job talked to me about putting money aside in my 401k and my former boss, Larry Somerville, they all stress the importance of retirement. Savings, no debt, and whatever you have left, that's what you spend. Um, and my father has retired well, and the sacrifices that I'm willing to make to retire my own terms is really live below my means, which for me, my motto is um, I can admire, but I don't have to acquire. Um, and um, I've just really saved a lot with my 401k and I've sacrificed a lot. Um, and if there was really one thing that I could change was really that sacrifice, looking more at my money on a monthly basis, semi-annual basis, um, and really knowing where I am at all times. I'm great at savings, but I just don't want to look at it. <laughs> Thank you, Renika. Um, she said, I can admire, but, but I don't I, have to acquire. I don't have to acquire. <laughs> I love that. Look, hashtag. Yes. That needs to be a hashtag right there. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, right. Uh, but, you know, what I found interesting about Renika's video is there's nothing about her that felt um, mad, sad, depressed about right. the sacrifice that she made. Um, and her clarity, mm -hmm. that yeah. vision, like yeah. she has a very particular vision yeah. for her life. I was thinking that too. Yeah. I'm just like, Renika knows what she wants and she's willing to put in the work to get there. So I, I love that. She had that why. Yeah. She knew why. She, she knew she her why. That's why a good point. I want to do this. Absolutely. Yeah. That that was beautiful. Any thoughts, Dianara, about Renika's video? She is a model. I wish we could have more people follow that same thing. <laughs> but you know what's powerful? She said she had a role model, and that reminds me of Janai. You said in the beginning you had someone yeah. that inspired you, that planted that seed. Yep. And so many people don't have that 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 could change your life, that changes your life. Right. Uh, Diana, I'm so glad that you brought that up because that's something that really resonated with me uh -huh. is um, – she has been modeling somebody's behavior for a long, long time. time. Mm -hmm. And then she kept getting the confirmation at work. Yes. Too. Yes. Right. Please do this. Please do this. You need to do this. And so um, if you don't have any role models, find them. Or be one. Yeah. Or be one. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> or certainly be one. be one. And you need to be asking some different questions yeah. to some different folks, people at your job, mm -hmm. people in your circle. But if you have a vision for your life, begin to seek out the people who are already there yeah. or on the road because they're going to give you the shortcut in the playbook to yeah. get there. Yeah. She's she's just everything she said. She's not reinventing the wheel to no. me. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. yeah, and that's smart. Yeah, it's very smart woman saves a lot of time and stress, <laughs> you know, but um, thank you. Yeah. Renika. That was beautiful. Any other advice, Dianara, for folks who think that they're maybe about five years out from retirement? Anything in particular you would advise them to do or not do? If you can figure out a way to maximize your retirement savings, do so. Meaning 
put as much into those 401ks, 403bs, IRAs, whatever vehicle you have to shelter that money away, especially in a tax efficient way, I mean, you know, saving on your, your tax bill. I think that that is key. Yeah. Um, I definitely agree with that. The other thing that I'd like to tell people, um, advise people to do is if you're that close, please don't wait to touch base with HR at your job, human resources, <laughs> get familiar with the process. Yeah. What's going to happen? At what point do you need to do X, Y, y and Z? Z? Yeah. Begin, a lot of big companies have um, workshops and seminars and things that you can participate in. You don't have to wait till your year of retirement to take advantage right. of all those resources. Learn what they're talking about now so you can say, oh my gosh, I didn't think about that. Because yeah. now that will give you time to make the adjustments versus exactly. being in the year of retirement and you're now you're you're feeling a little afraid, afraid panic to even talk about it, to even talk about it because right. you did not um, move as you know quickly as you needed to. Um, I also like to see people go to the Social Security website, SSA.gov, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if you're falling within that age range of where you um, right. can get your right. Social Security and find out how much you can get and when. Yeah. You know, you need to make a decision, not under stress or duress. Am I going to wait? Yeah. Do I need that money right away? Right away. But these are things that you should be doing five years out for sure. And they, they should. I know some of this is already in the checklist, so I don't want to rehash it, but check your investments sometimes people are disciplined and put money away and they put it in a fixed account that's not really growing right. over time that's a good point. so that's that's something tactical that's really important look at your asset allocation how, how are your funds divvied up and sometimes people think again because they're retiring in five years they have to be conservative no honey we are living 30 years in retirement so we still have a long ways before you need to use at least some of that money, right? You might start taking a portion out in five years, but you won't be taking all of it out. So a portion of it still has 20 years to grow or 15 years to grow or 10 years. And that's a good time for equity investments. So look at your diversification strategy. So Renika, thank you again for um, submitting your video and for being a poster child for <laughs> yes. how to prepare for retirement on your own terms. Thank you so much. So next, um, we're going to address folks who think maybe they're about 10 years out. Okay. Because again, you need to be executing too. We, we don't want you waiting. So another one of our amazing Thank Me Later community, True View members, we have Kathy who submitted a video. So let's see what Kathy had to say. Hello, Thank Me Later community. My name is Kathy Sykes and I live in Chattanooga, Tennessee and I'm 52 years old and I would like to retire within the next 10 years. And what retirement looks like for me would be uh, fi being financially independent and not uh, having to owe anyone any major debts. Uh, I would like to travel um, as many trips as I would like to take. But I would also like to spend my time um, doing what I love to do, whether it's working part time in my career or uh, finding something else that would bring me joy. Uh, within my life that will be able to pay my bills. Um, some of the things that I feel like I have done right so far is I'm really close to paying off the big major debts that some people have, like your home mortgage, <clears throat> um, car notes, and things of that uh, type. Um, I do have a soon-to-be 15-year-old son, so of course I'm looking toward um, paying college. So that is something that um, I will remain working full time at this point in order to uh, make sure that all of the expenses uh, and needs are taken care of for him. Um, some, some of the things that may have put me back uh, just a little bit was a divorce. You know, I had to uh, tap into some of the money that I already had put aside for uh, emergencies or our savings account or college fund in order to try to rebuild and um, after that type of life event. So I'm very thankful for the thank you, thank me later community 
who have given me ideas and uh, mentorship. And I can look forward to what other ideas other ladies have that they can share with me. Thanks. Hey, Kathy, thank you so much for submitting your video. I know that you are in the meeting with us this evening. We really appreciate it. And Diana and Michelle, um, what I think of immediately with Kathy is steady. Yeah. You know, she's just very steady and she's had some life happen too. Yeah. 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 I've known divorces who have taken people out Out. of the game completely. I'm done. Yeah. (laughs) Done. Yeah. On the sideline, never recover. Like, I just appreciate the fact that she acknowledged it. Um, and moved on. And moved on. She did. Yeah. I got things to do. I got things to do. Yeah. So I yeah. think we need to get to doing them. Yeah. And, and join the club with how many other people who have been there. Exactly. So, and we live and we move on you and will. we can still retire the way that we want to. Yeah. We can certainly do that. Diana, what were your thoughts? I love both of them. Both of them said financial independence is, is their vision of retirement. And that's exactly what we've been talking about, that it's, so much more fun to look forward to that. Um, I did have the thought that when you have travel in your mind frame for retirement, you have all, we have all planned a vacation of some sort, and we've done a budget for that type of vacation. So you can plan that out and know if in retirement, I want to travel, how often will I travel? Right. How many times a year? Right. It, will it be every year? So I have, I have a number, an idea that I can work with because sometimes we don't know we, I, how much will I need for retirement? Well, look at the things that you do and the things you want to do right? and put those numbers on paper so that you can work towards them. And on the other hand, I will say there's one thing she mentioned about the college student. I don't want to be the bad guy, but we all as mothers want to provide so much for our children. And it's great for those of us, if, if we can, uh, just keep it in mind, not at the expense, of your financial independence and retirement. That's all I will say. So for example, when we have uh, saving for retirement, we have less time than our college students and we have less resources, right? So we have IRAs, 401ks. For college, you have a lot more options for funding. You have loans, you have, not that I'm, I'm, there's just more options, loans, uh, grants, scholarships, part-time work, so you you do want to try to stay away from that as a priority when it comes to planning for your retirement. And I know that's not always received uh, well from my clients. So I'll just tell you that's something that I have to explain that let's let's find a way to okay, let's maybe not fund everything. Let's help them out, but let's find a way to help them because we need to apply some of the funds here to get you where we need to get you so you can be financially independent by this time. Um, Dianara, I appreciate that. And let me tell you something. I have a star by college. Over here. College a star. Uh, let me tell you. And, and what I meant by my star was, and this is for Kathy and anyone else. And, and, and I'm saying this as a mother, too. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm saying this as a mother who's already put two kids through college. Um, mm-hmm. There is no financial aid for retirement. It's not. There's none. And this is actually a time as a parent, um, specifically as a mother, where you have to put yourself first. And we're not used to doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's no shame in that. Right. And so our children need to be more resourceful Mm -hmm. and we need to come up with a plan and we need to say, hey, I'm not paying for your education. Um, I'm not co-signing any loans. I'm not getting any parent plus loans. So we need to get to work now. So we can make that dream happen. Yeah. And there's no shame in that. No. Though. There's none at all. Accountability and responsibility. Accountability and responsibility. So, um, Kathy, for your son, please um, look in our community. We have some amazing information and content on the scholarship process. So um, we typically cover that content in September. And so either you can look by date or by topic, but th- the journey starts now. He's 15. Literally, you should be beginning this process in the ninth grade. And then that now. way, start now. Start now. And then that way you can um, focus on your retirement and put yourself first. You know, um, I wanted to address um, Kathy's mentioning about fear. She talked about the fear and the anxiety, just thinking about financial planning and retirement and so forth. And uh, one of the things a lot of people want to know is how I can actually get rid of my fear. 
uh, and I'm sorry to break the news to you, you're not going to get rid of fear. It's going to be with you. And actually, it's not a bad thing. So I advocate for not focusing so much on getting rid of fear, but using it as fuel to get you going. Because mm-hmm. it will, it, it, and Darnar said this earlier, right. you know, y- it will get you going. I mean, and fear is one of those very primal things that, you know, if we didn't have fear, we wouldn't know to run from a bear, right? right. Yeah, we wouldn't have made and, it. And so people. now that we right. don't have bears chasing us, we <laughs> right. have other things chasing us. Other bears. Yeah, right. Other bears. <laughs> <laughs> right. Other bears that right. are chasing us. And so yes. that fear is not always a bad thing. Maybe relanguage it and it's motivation. Right. If I'm scared of something, it means I need to go and right. find out what I need to do. Right. Yeah. Right. Get the information. Get the and, information. And use the energy yeah. the right way. Yeah. I like that. Last thing that I wanted to say, Kathy, was um, one of the first things that you talked about is being debt free. And I had a great aunt and uncle who um, I admired so much as a as a kid. And they retired well. You know, I'm using the air quotes of well. air quotes. I yeah, saw air that. Quote. Um, as black folk, I think they retired really well. But once I became an adult, I realized they went into retirement being debt free. And I'm like, that's why they have so much more flexibility. OK, that makes sense. And so I think that should be a goal uh, of yours, Kathy, or anyone else who is trying to retire well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's something certainly as a goal to to shoot towards because it does. It gives you a little bit more flexibility. Yeah, yeah. You can move a certain way. And I think it just gives you an inherent peace yeah. to know, yeah. oh, I don't have to think about that. Oh, oh I yeah. don't have a mortgage. Oh, oh, I don't have a car note. You know, oh, I don't have any credit card debts. You know, just saying that makes you feel a certain way. Yeah. So, Kathy, thank you so much for sharing that information. That was amazing. All right, Dianara. Last group of folks. So these... People who are thinking, you know what? It's going to be at least 20 years before I retire. Minimum of 20. <laughs> so what, what, what advice do you have for the folks? And I hate to put them in an age group because, you know, a lot of times in the past, the way we traditionally thought about retirement, this would be like your 30 somethings, you know, your 30s. You're like, come on, y'all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what y'all doing over here? So folks who are 20 years out, what you thinking? Use those benefits. Use those 401ks. Use the IRA if you don't have a 401k. Um, I I always say no matter what age group, do a budget. Do the exercise. Not only the budget, but the retirement calculators, because we don't always have a realistic idea of what we need to put away or how much we'll need. But I would say maximize if you can, but at least get started. Because the thing is, usually when you're that far away, You've recently bought a house. You've recently had children. You've so you end up getting caught up with these expenses and say, okay, I'll, I need to deal with this now. My kids are here now. My mortgage is here now. Let me do that later. So if you can find balance between the now yeah. and the later, you would be much more successful and better off later on. If we can just balance out the the, the two goals that you're in at that time frame. 20 years out. I, I know Dinara and Michelle, that was a mindset shift that I had to learn um, when I became an entrepreneur. And it hit me. It's like, wait a minute, the money that I'm making today, it's supposed to support me today, but it's also supposed to support my future too. Right. Exactly. Because a lot of us are using the money that we're getting today to support today mm-hmm. versus saying, <laughs> wait, 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 <laughs> hold on. Where's the money supposed to come from to support your tomorrow? Yeah. And so you have to be very intentional about saving. And Diana, this is one thing that drives me crazy. When I hear people say, oh, my company doesn't match. So they don't contribute to their 401k. I'm like, what in the world does that have to do with the price of tea in China? What in the world (laughs) is your retirement? I've heard that so many times. I know. It's not y'all's retirement. It's your retirement. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So you have to contribute. And, and you have to start now. You do. And yeah. as an entrepreneur, yeah. even more so. Oh, my gosh. Even more so. <laughs> you really do. You're on your own. 
<laughs> yeah, you, you really need to. So any other tips um, before we go to our Q&A, Dianara, for our folks who have 20 plus years or, or think or think they have an eternity? I'm not even going to say 20. <laughs> they think they have forever. I got forever. I know. <laughs> these, are, these are always often the biggest spenders. So mm-hmm. if I can take from the book of Kathy, because at that point, you you know, you've already worked a few years, you have your income up and you start getting comfortable spending today, I would say definitely revisit the spending and try to take it a notch down to fund your tomorrow because I don't think anyone um, has put it the way you put it, Janai, Janai, where you're saying, I'm actually using this money for today and tomorrow. I don't think that that is out there, that mindset, that thought that, yes, it's for today and tomorrow. So let's take a little less off the table for today on the spending and put, put it away so I can spend tomorrow. So I really like that, actually. We'll but that's one. it, because they're the biggest spenders, typically. Right. There's a lot of head nodding in the studio over here. <laughs> yeah. I know. Poor Lauren over here in the back. She's rolling her eyes up in her head. <laughs> you're like, <laughs> you're like, what in the world? <laughs> no, and you feel it, because you're like, I've worked so hard, and so I deserve this nicer car, and right. I deserve this. I earned it. Yeah, we earned it. We're working hard, but I want to also need to have things in, in retirement as well or yeah when and i at stop that time you'll working. be wiser so you know oh yeah and all i'm gonna say to all you 20 30 something year olds honey you're gonna look up in a minute and you're gonna be 50 and you're gonna be like you what? blink what happened? happened what happened <laughs> where did the time go what if you can, was. I know. These 20, 30 year olds in the studio are having a tough time right now. Right. They're having a tough time. <laughs> go to your, you know, you don't always want to go at that age to a mentor, but it, it's so important to go to someone you trust that did yeah. well with money. Because in your 20s, if you could, if you could buy any type of real estate and just Start that early with whatever you can. Is someone nodding? Yeah. Oh, and I'm not a realtor. You have a whole a amen corner over here, Dianara. You got a whole <laughs> amen corner over here. Yes. If we can do that, we think it, at that point, oh, no, I don't have enough. Or start with something. Right. Your stepping stone, just like your first job might have been your stepping stone. Do that with your investments. Yeah. And take a lot of risk with your investment, uh, like your 401k. Please don't put it. You have 20 plus years. Please don't put it in your savings or fixed option. Diversify as aggressively as possible because we have to do it the other way. We have to get more conservative as we get closer to needing the money. And I have a lot of people say, oh, but I don't feel comfortable with this. Yes, but you have time. This is the way it works. It's in a it's in a vehicle that is monitored right these funds have been picked they're diversified they're not individual stocks for the most part so yes please do take some risk with your investment selection so you can grow your money at the end of the day you want your money working for you as much of your money that you can put to work for you so you're not constantly working for the money and then when you stop working you have no money that's what you want to do right i love that. get into things that will make money for you get the money to work for you I think that's why it's very important to have uh, a person like Darnara that can help you understand that. Right. And especially if you're 20 years out, right. that you actually can get to know the meaning of these words that scare you so okay. that as you move forward, you're like, oh, I heard that before. And it becomes a part of your familiar language. Mm-hmm. And so it's not as scary as yeah. you move forward. And help you work through that fear. Yeah. You know, work through right. that fear. Yeah. 